Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we will discuss about El Nino. El Nino is a phenomena which occurs in southern Pacific Ocean. This phenomena affects weather of almost entire earth. But before looking into El Nino, let's discuss about thermocline. Thermocline is a transition layer between warmer waters at the surface of our oceans and cooler waters at the deeper parts of our oceans. We can see that the temperature is uniform for first few hundred meters. Similarly, the temperature is uniform at the deeper parts of our oceans. But in between there lies a region where the temperature drastically changes. And this region is called thermocline. Now here we can see southern Pacific Ocean. We can see that under normal circumstances, that is when there is no wind currents, there will be hot water in the central regions of Pacific Ocean. Similarly, the cold water is confined to the coastal margins of Southern America. Similarly, there is a thermocline which we can see over here. This region is the region where temperature changes drastically from the warmer surface waters of oceans to the cooler, deeper waters of oceans. So, thermocline is also almost horizontal under normal conditions. Moreover, there is a high pressure region towards the South American side of South Pacific Oceans and there is a low pressure region towards the Australian side. Now we know that wind moves from higher pressure region to lower pressure region. So we can see a wind current moving from higher pressure to low pressure regions. This wind current along with it drags the warmer water towards the Australian side. And similarly it also drags the colder water from the South American coasts. We can see here that this warmer water is moving towards Australian side and as it moves towards here we can see that the warmer water amount is increasing and we see the thermocline moving downwards. Similarly on this side we can see that the thermocline has moved upwards. The cooler water has come to the surface and we can see the process of upwelling over here. Now we know that upwelling is good for fishing. Therefore, there is a bounty full of fishing over here on these coastal margins under normal circumstances. Moreover, this wind which reaches the low pressure region, it rises up. And because it is moving over the oceans, it carries a lot of moisture. So when it rises up over here, it brings a lot of rain in this region. This rising air then again moves back and it completes the circulation by descending at the higher pressure region. Now this whole circulation of wind that is from higher pressure region to lower pressure region and again going up and descending back to the higher pressure region is called walker circulations. This is a normal circulations which we can see in normal years. During these years we will see that the thermocline is more inclined on the Australian side. Here because there is a lot of warm water over here the amount of warm water accumulation is more and therefore this thermocline moves downwards. While on this side there is a lot of water which is coming up. So we see that the cooler waters from the depth of ocean reaches the surface and we see a thermocline which reaches almost to the surface in the South American side of Pacific Ocean. Moreover under normal conditions there is a cold ocean current over here which is called Humboldt current. And on the Australian side we see a warm ocean current. But this movement of air is interrupted due to some regions which is still unknown. And we will see that this normal circulation of air which is called walker circulation weakens over time. And because of the weakening of these winds, the warm water which were taken to the Australian side now start moving towards the center of the Pacific Ocean. Similarly, the cooler waters which are over here, they will also start moving towards the South American side. With the weakening of walker circulations, we also see that the pressure profile also changes. Earlier here there was higher pressure region, but after weakening of walker circulation, we see that there exists a lower pressure region here. Similarly, earlier there was low pressure region over here, but with the weakening of walker circulation, we see a higher pressure region over here. Now this change in pressure gradient is called Southern Oscillations and therefore El Nino is sometimes also called as Southern Oscillations because the lower pressure region changes to higher pressure region and the higher pressure region changes to lower pressure regions during El Nino. 
Now with the reversal of pressure gradient, we can see that the warm waters which were confined towards the Australian region, they will start moving towards the central part of our South Pacific Ocean. Similarly, the cooler waters will also move back towards the Southern American coastline because the dragging force of the Walker cell ended here. We also know that a wind moves from high pressure region to low pressure region. Therefore, a wind current starts from the higher pressure region of Australia towards the lower pressure region of Southern America. This wind current will drag the warmer waters towards the South American continent. You can see here the warmer waters moving towards the South American continent and because of which there is accumulation of water over here. And therefore, some of this water will move towards the deeper parts and therefore changing the thermocline we can see over here. Similarly, the water which is moved away from the coastal margins of Australia, it causes depletion of water over here. Therefore, water rises from the deeper parts of our oceans to fill this depletion of water over here. And we can see the thermocline almost reaches the surface of ocean over here. Now, earlier we had seen that because there was upwelling of water in this region, there was plenty fishing activity going on. But because now there is warmer water over here, the fishing activity which occurred over here is disrupted. Similarly, earlier there was a lot of rainfall over here because the wind currents were rising over here. But due to El Nino, we see that the wind rises over here, bringing a lot of rainfall in this region and causing drought in this region. Now this El Nino wind current also weakens over time. It lasts for around 12 to 16 months. Now when this weakens, we can see again that the normal pressure conditions come back. We will see a low pressure region over Australia and a higher pressure region over Southern American region. Now with the reversal of pressure gradient, we will see that the wind current also changes its direction. Now the wind current will move from South American region towards the Australian region, but it moves with a very high velocity. This is higher than its normal velocity. And because of its higher velocity, it is able to drag a lot of water from South American side towards the Australian side, concentrating the water more towards Australia and carrying a lot of cold water from the deeper parts of oceans towards the central part of our Pacific Ocean. So you can see that now the warmer waters are confined more towards Australia compared to the normal positions and the cooler waters are also spread a lot more compared to its normal conditions. Similarly, this thermocline is also more tilted towards the Australian region. It is at greater depths compared to its normal positions. So we can see that when the wind directions return to their normal directions in La Nina, they return with a very high velocity causing an extreme concentration of warmer waters and, go and the thermocline going in deeper parts of our oceans. Now in this diagram, you can see that under normal conditions, the warm waters are confined towards the western direction of Pacific Ocean. The red color indicates warm waters. Similarly, on the coastlines of Australia, we see warm waters. And on the coastlines of South America, we see cold water. This is Humboldt current going on over here. But with the onset of El Nino, we will see that the warm water which was over here has moved towards the eastern side of Pacific Ocean. We can see that this whole region is now having warm waters. Even the coastline of Southern America is now having warm waters. The Humboldt current, which was cold water current, is now been replaced. And over here, there was warm current earlier. Now, during El Nino, we see cold water current over here. Now, with the onset of La Nina, we can see that the colder waters are now again stretched as far as towards the Australia and we can see that the warm waters are now confined more towards Australia. It is confined more in the western direction of Pacific Ocean. So you can see that this whole region is now having warm waters and we see that the warm water conditions have returned over here. So this is a comparison of warm waters in all three conditions. At the top, we have normal conditions. We can see that the warm water is relatively spread in this area. The major concentration of warm water lies over here in the western Pacific Oceans. With the onset of El Nino, we see that these warm waters are now dragged towards the eastern side of Pacific Ocean. And we can see a more concentrated warm water in the eastern side. With the onset of La Nina, we can see that the warm waters are confined more towards Australia. You can see that earlier, this was the 
spread of warmer water in normal condition but during La Nina we see that the spread of warmer water is more confined towards the western direction of Pacific Ocean and this is an animation from Dutton Institute and we can see that in this there is a cross section of our ocean and we see that the warm waters are in the western side of Pacific Ocean. We see that there is a thermocline which is more inclined towards the Australian side or western side of Pacific Ocean. With the onset of El Nino, we will see that this warm waters even in the deeper parts of ocean will start to move towards the eastern side of Pacific Ocean. You can see the warm water approaching the eastern, eastern side of Pacific Ocean. And we can see that at the surface there is a concentration of warm waters now. Now at the peak of El Nino, we will see that this profile has completely changed and there is a lot of warm water which was earlier over here has now moved over here. Even at the surface, we have a full concentration of warm water. Now during the process of La Nina, we will see again the concentration of warmer waters will move back towards the western Pacific. We can see now that the warmer waters are confined more towards the western directions. Earlier in the normal condition, they were spread till here but now they are even confined more in the western directions so here we can see a quick comparison of all three states on the normal state the warmer water were over here this was the thermocline in the el nino phase we see that the warmer waters have such kind of profile in the cross section of our oceans and the thermocline is more inclined to in the south american continent side and during the la nina condition again the water has moved more towards the western pacific directions this was the normal positions, but this is during La Nina. I hope you like this video. And if you like this video, then do not forget to subscribe our channel and share it with our friends. Do follow us on our Twitter and Instagram accounts. The links are given over here. Thank you.